In this video, I'll share with you 10 must-know Google Calendar tips. Tip number one is how you can find a suitable time for a meeting. In this case, we see that we already started creating our calendar invitation. We've added Adam and here we can click on the find a time and then we get both of the calendars displayed like so, so we can find a suitable time. I'm going to uh, close this like so, I'm not going to save it because I would like to show you another way, which I personally prefer is by simply adding the person, let's say Adam in this case. And here we have both calendars now overlaid. And now whenever I click in a time which would be suitable, let's say tomorrow, um, it automatically adds both of the people. The default text of the invite is just the name of the two people. And from here on, I can you know, create my invitation at what any, whatever attachments I need or what not. I find that to be a bit of an easier way. So I like to find a suitable time before I start creating the event simply by searching for that person or also multiple people. And then having the whole overview of the calendar and simply clicking in one of the times to add a new invitation. Tip number two is for the keyboard shortcut fans. I'm going to write the question mark on my keyboard and there you go. The keyboard shortcut list appears. If you want to use that too, to be able to maybe faster memorize the keyboard shortcuts, head over to settings under the general tab, you'll see keyboard shortcuts and enable keyboard shortcuts like so. And here it says, press question mark to show the list of available keyboard shortcuts. Cool. The third tip is how to email all guests. Here we have a team meeting planned. And if we click on the envelope icon, we see that we can answer or send a message out. Hey there, hmm. da, da, da. And let's send this out and then check Adam's account to see how that looks. So how will this message then look for the people who received it? So a new message came in from Jane example. There you go. So here, that is the message itself. And here, the information of our meeting also sent out. I don't know if you noticed while I was writing it, there was a little small um, print saying that the meeting message will, or the meeting information will also be part of the message. And that's clearly what we're seeing here. Tip number four is, adding a secondary time zone. Let's head over to our settings. And here we can tick the box and say display secondary time zone. Um, let's go ahead and I don't know. Yeah, let's choose Hawaii. I don't know. How do you abbreviate Hawaii? I'm just going to say HW, probably not correct. What does that do? It shows a secondary time zone. This is very, very cool when you're working with an international team. I've used this quite a lot when wanting to schedule meetings with other countries with other time zones, and that might be a handy feature. If you do not need it anymore, then you can just go ahead and untick the box and there you go. You only see your own time zone. Tip number five is how you can set your own custom view. So let's head over to the settings like so. And if you, huh, let's go here, click on view options. You could also scroll down here. You see set custom view. This is currently on five days. Maybe you want to see three days like so. Let's try that out. Um, by the way, you can start your week on Monday, Sunday, or Saturday, depending on where in the world you are. For us here in the US, we, we usually start with Mondays. So there you go. So where's my custom view here? The three days, you can add it like so. And we can go ahead and modify that again, just to make sure that it's working as intended. Let's try out, or was it here? View options, let's try out two days. Go back. There you go. It's chosen two days now. So that is our custom setting and the keyboard shortcut would be X. By the way, this is something I do very often when I'm kind of like, um, focused on one specific day. I want to see the whole week. I'll just hit the W key on my keyboard, use that keyboard shortcut. And instantly I see the entire week from Monday till Sunday in my case. Why? Because I've set it up like so, uh, but you could also say that you do not want to see weekends. So that's a bonus tip. 
Tip number six is how you can change the color of an event. As you see here, Jane Examples calendar is purple. Let me go ahead and show you this here. So that's Jane Examples calendar, purple. Okay, perfect. But what about the super important meeting here? She really wants that to kind of like pop out as she scrolls through her calendar. So you simply right click on an event and let's say we'll make it tomato red. There you go. So now this event is visibly different from all of the other events in Jane Examples calendar. Tip number seven is pin an event to the sidebar. So let me start creating a new event. I click in here, some random event and so on and so forth. And maybe now I want to check something and the event is right in the middle of my, right in my face. Um, I can't see what's on Wednesday the 28th. So what I can do is you see this here, dock to sidebar. Wow, that looks cool. Changes the view so I can scroll through. Maybe I want to see the entire week or go back to the day. So this gives me the flexibility of that event not covering up my calendar, blocking me from seeing something that I need to see. And if I want to undock it, I simply click on it like so. But what you also can do is you can drag this like so or drag it somewhere else. So, okay, my, my window here is a little bit the height isn't that big, but if you have a big screen and you have your calendar open there, you can drag that event pretty much to anywhere within that browser window. Tip number eight is how you can hide the guest list. So let's say you have a meeting and you don't want everyone to know who's appearing to the meeting. This you see oftentimes um, when a lot of people are invited. So you simply start editing the event. And if you say, see guest list, untick that. So these are the guest permissions. These are the guests here, you're the organizers, you're not the guests, but the others. If we click on save, since it's a, recur it's a recurring event, we have to say that it's only for this event. In this case, the people will not see the guest list. Um, let's see if that's true, what I'm just um, telling you here. So here we have Adam's account and Adam somewhere, uh, he's invited to this event. So let's have a look. Adam, there you go. Um, the guest list has been hidden, so it's obvious that Adam cannot see who's also invited to that event. Tip number nine is how you can propose a new time. So Jane received um, a message or an invitation. Here we see short chat, so it's not um, fully colored. Why not? Because she has not answered to this invitation yet. And um, here we have the going, not going, um, which is really cool, but it hides the fact that you can actually click on this, expand the view, and here you can say propose a new time. I know this is a feature that a lot of people struggle to find. By the way, you also see it in the Gmail version. Let me just go ahead and start up Gmail to show you what I mean. Uh, let me just close the sidebar. So here we have the invitation from Adam Muster. There you go. Here you have the yes, maybe no. And if you click on the more options, you have propose a new time. Um, so you might want to choose it from here. And it again brings you to the same interface. Um, I would propose blah, 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 blah. Let's send that out. Uh, let's change the time to maybe 2.30, send proposal, and there it goes out. So here you see how um, it's not an accepted invitation. Um, you know, it doesn't look exactly the same as this one does here. There are lines um, in the color sec colored segment. And here you see that we have a proposal that we've sent out. So you can either add the proposal directly from the calendar or answer the calendar invitation message that you receive in Gmail. In both cases, you will then be brought to the interface to that sidebar on the left where you can propose a new time. Tip number 10 is how you can create breakout rooms for a Google Meet call in advance. So let's say for this team meeting here, we want to create breakout rooms in advance. So we click on the edit event button. And here in the section where we have the join with Google Meet button, there's a gear icon. So we can say video call options. And here we can create our different breakout rooms, rename them. You already, you know, distribute the people into the breakout rooms so that once we're in the call and we want to start the breakout rooms, we don't have to take care of the shuffling or sending the people or organizing the breakout rooms. Instead, we just apply what we've created here.
Which of the tips I've shared with you is your personal favorite? And while you're on this channel, why don't you also go ahead and check out our Gmail, Google Drive, and Google Calendar video tutorials that we've already posted and go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on any of the video tutorials we'll publish in the future.